Well, good morning, everyone, and work welcome to our worship service for this morning. Um, as you know, we are virtual this morning, and uh, we are continuing our COVID precautions. Uh, Pastor Justin and I are staying at least 12 feet apart to secure our uh, safety. And uh, hopefully next week, we'll be back in person with all of you here in the sanctuary, as well as those people at home. An introduction to our worship service for this morning. As we continue through the time after Epiphany, stories of the call to discipleship show us the implications of our baptismal calling to show Christ to the world. Jesus begins proclaiming the good news and calling people to repentance right after John the Baptist is arrested for preaching in a similar way. Knowing that John was later executed, we see at the very outset the cost of discipleship. Still, the two sets of brothers leave everything they have known and worked for to follow Jesus and to fish for people. We begin our worship with our song, Jesus Calls Us Over the Tumult. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives while the restless sea day by day his clear voice sounding saying christian follow me as of old saint andrew heard it by the galilean lake turn from home and toil and kindred leaving all for jesus sake jesus calls us from the of the vain world's golden store from each idol that would keep us saying christian love me more in our joys and in our sorrows days of toil and hours of ease still he calls in cares and pleasures christian love me more than thee Jesus calls us by your mercy, Savior, may we hear your call. Give our hearts to your obedience, serve and love you best of all. And now in our service, we take the time and the moment to clear our minds of all the stuff that's going on around us, to still our hearts and to settle our souls. Now I ask you to please close your eyes and just relax. Relax your shoulders, relax your arms, place your hands in your lap. Now take a deep breath and breathe in the love that God has for you, but quickly breathe out everything that holds you back from believing that God truly loves you. Now take this time to look back on the week that has passed. In what ways have you fallen short of the mark that God has set for you? Maybe you've been angry, short, or unkind toward others. Maybe you've said things and you've done things that you now regret. In what other ways have you misstepped in the eyes of our God? Now take all these things that are weighing heavy on your heart and place them at the feet of Jesus and watch him as he stoops down and lifts them up to the cross where all our sins are forgiven. Know that in all our failings, our God loves us unconditionally our failures and all, our shortcomings, our sins, our faults, but most importantly, forgives us unconditionally in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now open your eyes and breathe in the peace, the love, the forgiveness that only our God can give. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, for Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we turn our attention to our children's message given by Natalie. Good morning. I wanted to share um, our story today, but it made me think of a game that I used to love to play. I actually still love playing it when I can with our um, high schoolers, and most of our young adults will know um, what this game is. Um, and we played it a lot at completion camp. I think at day camp we played it maybe once or twice or with youth group after camp. I can't remember which one, but normally, most of our youth um, know that when I bring this out, this means that we're gonna play kick the can. And for those of you that have never played kick the can, it's basically like hide and seek and tag and kind of like capture the flag all rolled into one. So what happens is we put this can or probably a sturdier can maybe at confirmation camp when we're done eating um, one of the corn veggies, we use that because this can probably would only survive one round of um, our kick the can, but this gets put into an open space. So if you think about what the backyard of church looks like, or if you're in the middle of, um, of somebody else's backyard, you would put this where everybody can see it. And the person that's it would um, count, just like in the game of hide and seek, they would cover their eyes and they would count um, and so then people try to kind of go hide because they don't want to get tagged or caught. Um, and they want to be able to kind of um, hide from the person that's it. But once the game starts and the can is sitting in the middle of an open space and the person that's it is starting to look for people and trying to tag people, you want to try to get back to this can and you want to be able to kick it before anybody else gets there and also before you get caught by the person that's it. So it's basically um, trying to not get caught or tagged um, and being able to kick the can. Some people just decide to hide the whole time. There are other that others that are braver and a little bit more competitive to want to be able to get to the can. Um, so when you're it, your job is to not only find um, and tag people that are playing with you, but also to kind of guard this can. And it's kind of hard to do both things. 
And what made me think about this game um, was our friend Jonah. Jonah was a prophet um, of God's, and he was his job was to give everyone um, God's messages. And so one day, God had asked him to go to a place called Nineveh. And they weren't living and doing really nice things that God wanted them to do. And so God said, Jonah, I want you to go to this place um, in Nineveh, and I want you to um, tell them that this isn't the way I want you to live. You need to do other things to live better and to and to um, be in God's way. And so what happened was Jonah decided he did not want to go to Nineveh. And he thought that God would never see him. And he thought that he could um, hide from God. And so that's what made me think of kick the can was hiding. And this is what happened. God said, mm, you can't hide from me. And so we'll learn in our story that Jonah actually gets on a ship and the ship gets wavy and rocky and they actually throw him overboard um, and he gets swallowed by a fish. Crazy, right? And so that whole idea of hiding from God is something that, you know, God, God is always with us. God is in our hearts. God is watching us always. And to try to hide something, sometimes we don't have great feelings or we might not like someone and God knows already. God knows what's in our hearts. And also God knows when we want forgiveness and we just are scared to ask for forgiveness. And so that's really kind of what happened with Jonah was Jonah got caught. Have you ever gotten caught doing something? I know I've gotten caught um, maybe doing something to my little brother. Um, and then it doesn't make us feel good, right? We, we feel ashamed and we know it wasn't the right thing to do. And so those are all the things that Jonah's going through. So when we're thinking about hiding something, when we are hiding from our parents or hiding something from a grown-up, um, or we think God can't see it, the truth is, is that God can see us and God knows what's in our heart. So that's what our lesson is today. Um, I hope that one day we will be able to play kick the can together um, and we are going to pray together. Let us pray. Father, we, we are so thankful for you. Even though you know everything about us, you still love us. You love us when we try to hide. You love us no matter what we do. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you, Natalie, for providing us our Old Testament lesson. For our New Testament lesson, we'll turn to Andrea. The reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. Paul does not disapprove of marriage or other human social institutions. He does, however, want Christians to live in the present, in fervent anticipation of God's future, which even now has dawned through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. These are the words of the Lord. Before Jesus calls his first disciples, he proclaims a message that becomes known as the gospel, or good news from God. God is ready to rule our lives. Those who realize this will respond with repentance and faith. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately 
they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So bear with me, because I've told this story before, but to be fair, it was one of the most important moments of my life. Many of you know I grew up in a suburban town of Marlton, New Jersey, just, just outside of Philadelphia. It was an amazing place to grow up, but, but I remember as a, as a young person, I always wanted more. I knew as soon as I finished high school that I was getting out there to, to see the world. And my parents, they, they exposed me to as much as they could in my early years. We went on trips around the country. We even went to the Bahamas once. But, but I wanted to see the world. And I didn't just want to see it. I wanted to experience the world, to explore, to to see it all. But it just didn't seem like that was in the cards for me. Went to school in Virginia, and then right after that, seminary in Philadelphia, all the same part of the East Coast. And, and I sought out opportunities to go further, but, but nothing just seemed right. They seemed too uncertain or, or too risky. And it kind of seemed like I was just going to continue along this path in this little corner of the world for the rest of my life. Well, then I had what, what I jokingly refer to as my quarter-life crisis. You know, it used to be a midlife crisis, but now we're too impatient. We have it at, in our quarter life. And... And at 24 years old, I realized I really hadn't been anywhere yet, and I was desperate to get out. So the week after I graduated seminary, I was going to do it. I was going to backpack through Europe. And if you know me, you know that when I do something, I don't like to do it halfway. So I had planned on a summer of complete freedom with no agenda, no schedule, no reservations. I bought an open-ended return plane ticket and an all-inclusive Eurorail train pass that could take me anywhere on the continent for the whole summer. My plan was every morning I was going to wake up in a new place and decide what country I was going to go to next. I remember having a conversation with my very nervous mother about this. There were no cell phones back then, so I had to make a deal with her that I would get an international calling card. And whenever I went to a new country, I would at least give a call so she knew where I was. Oh, the adventure that I was about to have. I packed up my backpack, I made my way to the airport, and one day later I landed at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris at 5 a.m. Did you know you lose a whole night's sleep when you fly to Europe? Man, I was so tired. And I was genuinely surprised that when I arrived there, nobody spoke English. None of the signs were easy to follow. I mean, sure, I had my phrase book, I had my maps, and I made my way into the center of the city, but, but then it was, it was hopelessly lost. I had arranged for a place to sleep for that first night, but, 
as much as I tried, I, I couldn't find it. I couldn't navigate the city. I was, was hopelessly lost there. No one was around at that early hour. And, and the few Parisians that I came into contact with, they took one look at me and they had no interest in giving me a hand. I was alone, I was confused, and, and I was terrified. And I remember sitting down on this park bench, dejected and, and frightened. And I took out my plane ticket, my return plane ticket. It was open-ended, I could use it whenever I wanted. Even today, if I chose. I remember sitting on that park bench, staring at that ticket. Nobody would fault me if I came home. Nobody would blame me if I, I decided this just wasn't for me and that it was too risky and too uncertain and and I just went right back to that airport and jumped on the next plane to take me back home. I remember that moment staring at that ticket when I read our gospel for today. You know, I've preached on this passage many times before, and I've, I've talked in the past about the honor that it must have been for Jesus to have called these young people these young men as disciples. But then I think about them, about Simon and, and Andrew, about James and John standing in that boat, staring at those nets in their hands. Those nets, that's all they've ever known. I mean, they were raised as, as fishermen all their lives in this small town, working alongside with their family. Those nets in their hands, that was their whole life. Everything they knew. And Jesus shows up out of nowhere. And he calls for them to just drop them, to drop everything and follow him. Follow him into the complete unknown. And maybe in some ways that was a blessing. I mean, if they knew all the struggle and the doubt and the danger and the sacrifice that was in store for them, would they have let go at all? I mean, if I knew I was going to be sitting on that park bench in Paris, seriously thinking about turning right around and coming home, would I have even gotten on that plane in the first place? Well, the good news, the, the miraculous, amazing news is that Simon and Andrew, that James and John, all the rest, they, they did drop those nets. They did leave everything they knew and follow. And they did have moments of doubt and confusion and, and heartache and danger. But through it all, they were there with Jesus. And in the end, they were the ones that formed this new church centered on Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. They were the ones that changed the world forever. And so, sitting on that park bench, staring at my ticket, thinking about turning right around, but then I snapped out of it. And then I figured out how to ask for directions. 
in French. I slowly but surely found my way around the city and, and found my way to my lodgings in the night. Now, to be fair, that summer it didn't always go easily. I slept in an alley one night. I slept in a stairwell another night. I got robbed at one point, and I worried the heck out of my poor mother. But I saw the Mona Lisa face to face. I walked to the top of the Duomo. I gazed at the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. I had the most incredible paella in Barcelona. I sipped French wine and cheese and a warm baguette as I sat on the rocky shore of the Riviera. It was the most incredible summer of my life, one that changed me forever. But it only happened because I dropped my nets and I stepped out. So what, what are your nets? What are the things in your life that you've always known and that you're holding on to? Is it that job that you know isn't going anywhere? Is it that relationship that needs to change, even end? Is it that addiction that's, that's gripped your life? Or that hurt, that, that regret, that grudge that's been weighing on your heart. We hold on to those nets so tight, so afraid to let go because we don't know what's next. Well, Jesus, Jesus is calling you calling for you to let go, to drop those nets, as, as scary, as impossible as that may seem, to let it go and, and to follow him, to let it go and, and to walk as his disciple through all the, the doubt and fear and the uncertainty, walking with him into the light of tomorrow, a new day, a day filled with, with love and forgiveness and promise and hope. It's all there if you just let go. Amen. Let's turn now to song.
please join me as we share in the prayers of intercession. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who provide leadership in our cities, our nation, and around the world, for nonprofit and non governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief. Today we especially pray for Bob, Lindsay, Matthew, Shane, Kate, Joe, Wanda, Carol, Karen, Albert Jr., Francie, Ronnie, and Max, and the grieving family of Nancy. That in the midst of their suffering, God's peace and mercy will surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for those organizations that meet via Zoom and virtually during the week that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now usually our ushers would come down the center aisle to receive your offering. Of course, we can't do that. So uh, we remind you that you certainly can mail in your donations by snail mail. You can do so online through uh, ascensionlutheran.org slash donate or use one of the many apps Venmo or Give Plus at ALC Deer Park. We thank you for your continued generosity, especially during this most difficult time. And now we turn to our song, Above All. Check it and alone like a rose, trampled. 
trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all. And now as we turn to the prayer that Jesus taught us, you can certainly hold hands with those in your family and those members that you are close to this morning. If you are alone, please join virtually with my hands as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And now several announcements for this morning for our confirmands who are doing sermon notes. The color of the day for the epiphany season is green. Um, although our offering envelopes are available in the narthex, um, if you want to, you can come down during this week. Just give Vicki a call in the office and let her know that you're picking up your offering envelopes. But for those who are unable to pick them up or get them, we will be delivering them in the next week or so. Uh, we will be resuming church activities and events beginning this Wednesday, January 27th. Uh, just a reminder, as we spoke last week, our annual meeting will be in March. That'll be Sunday, March 21st, and more information will be forthcoming. Um, today at 1145, we'll be meeting with our first communicants for their orientation meeting via Zoom. And that's again at 1145 today. Uh, we're going to be getting a, a Eucharistic ministry to those who are homebound, those who are unable to come for communion. And in order to expedite that ministry, we need many volunteers. And um, if you're interested or need to be trained, just simply let me know and um, I'll be getting in contact with you. We have a few that have already volunteered, but we're looking for so many more. So please, um, if you're interested, contact me. And now our blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Our closing song is Holy, Holy, Holy. Thou art holy, there is none beside.
Go in peace, welcoming to all, growing in faith, and serving together. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful Sunday, a great week ahead, and we'll see you next Sunday. Mm -hmm.